Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 7.15 p.m. Or it was 7.15 p.m. as I was walking out the door. I looked at the clock. Um, so here's the story, Morning Glory. You know like when you leave work on a Friday and you're leaving for vacation and you're going with your friends or you're going with your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or whatever and you, you call that person and you're like, we're on vacation, we're on vacation and you're so excited, right? And um, so here's the deal. As soon as I get done with this vlog, I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation. Um, I feel as if I need to take uh, some time off. And by some time, I mean like a day. <laughs> a day, maybe two. I might take off Monday too, but I don't think so. I probably, having not filmed anything for a day, I'll be like, oh my God, I'm going crazy. So, um, I'll, I'll get to the reason why in a second. But today, um, just so that when you guys see this video go up tomorrow, you'll be like, I thought Peter said he wasn't filming anything today. So anyway, um, today I got up very, very late. Um, Alex ran me to go pick up my medicine, and I got some Diet Cokes and things like that. And um, I came home, and my plan was to literally film videos on all my channels. And then I started thinking, I was like, um, well, I could probably film two videos for all my channels, except for my vlog, because I can't vlog two vlogs back to back and they'll understand anyway if I take a day off. And I was like, I could film two Peter Rhythms videos, two Peter Does Stuff videos, two, and I was like, I stopped myself in the middle of it and I was like, okay, this is, this is what you used to do back in the day where you would literally film a video for every day while you were gone on vacation except for your drama video and your vlog. It's too much, just take a day, just take a day. So I actually, I was going to film, or I filmed, two drama videos. One is like 39 minutes long and the other one is like four. And I said they were going to be short. I honestly got thought they would be like 20 minutes. But the one that I'm posting today is like 39, 37 minutes long. And the one for tomorrow that I was going to post today is like 47 minutes. And I thought, why am I going to post two videos that are 40 minutes long the most, when, one shorter, one longer, um, on the same day when I could just save one for tomorrow and post it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to post one tonight, it's uploading right now, it's getting done, and then I'm going to open or upload the second one tomorrow. Um, but that will be the only video that I post tomorrow. I'm not going to vlog, I'm not going to film on any of my other channels. Today I also filmed a Peter Does Stuff video. I wasn't even really planning on it, like by that point, I was like, I kind of settled myself down enough. It was getting late in the day. I, literally, you guys, and I'll explain this in a second, I did not get up until like 3 o'clock today. And then I like rolled over, I went in the bathroom, I brushed my teeth, washed my face, mouthwash, put cologne on, like put my clothes on. I said, okay, can we go now? And Alex was like, yeah, you wanna go right in a second? Cause he had a birthday dinner for work friends that he was going to tonight. It was just like all of the girls that he works with. And then, like no spouses or anything. And then his other friend, he's going to like a going away party. And I don't like, I know his friend that's like hosting it, but I don't really know the other people that are involved. So he asked me if I wanted to go and I was like, no, I really need to just stay in and watch. I'm so excited. I'm gonna either like get pizza or pasta or something like that. And I'm just gonna sit here and relax and watch a bunch of TV shows. That is my plan tonight, is just to like veg out and watch a bunch of TV shows. So um, this is like how my mind works. I was like, is that even like, is that if, if that's offensive to say veg out, I don't know, but I, I don't know if we're supposed to say that anymore. Every once in a while, like I'll say something on camera and I'm like, is that like offensive? Like, can I say that? Can I not say that? You know, whatever. Um, and they're, and they're, to be honest with you, like stupid things, you know, that you wouldn't think. Like when I'm talking about my OCD and I say I'm feeling like I'm going crazy, like that's my experience, but like I don't want to offend somebody by saying that OCD is, you know what I'm saying? Like you, I don't want to offend anybody and so I'm like very careful with some of the things I say other than telling people to get fucked on my drama channel. <laughs> But anyway, so I filmed that. I had all this dog food that got delivered today because I ordered all this. We're having a really hard time with Boo Radley eating, although I just went down and looked and he ate all of his food for um, his new food, his dinner tonight. They got real excited about and he loves his new treats. And so, um, who is coming down this road so fast? That's oh, my neighbor. Hey. Um, so... I was like in the middle of all this and I was like, well, I want to film this video throwing this, showing this dog food before I put it all away and the dog treats and stuff. So, I, and those are like real easy videos for me to film. So I just put the camera in the cabinet and filmed that video like a haul really quick. And, um, hey. 
and uh, filmed a haul really quick of like dog food and dog treats because I get so much help from you guys sending me messages about like what your dog likes and doesn't like and things like that and I like I'll go and look at those things and they help me or I'll look them out online so I wanted to share with other people like that Boo Radley really likes his blue food and treats and I show the ones that he really likes and stuff like that so I wanted to do that um I wanted to talk on my Peter Does Stuff channel about people asking me to talk about budgeting. I also have a PO unboxing I still need to do over there. So I've got a couple videos that um, I still need to do on that channel. But And I have like five or six reviews. And so I was like, I, I actually before I started doing this video, I brought out what I was going to review today. And I thought, enough. Enough. Just film your vlog. Order your, your food. Alex is out with her, his friends. You deserve to enjoy your night tonight, and you need to just relax and take tomorrow. I have the I have the book club tomorrow. So for those of you that don't know, the True Crime the True Crime Book Club's live stream is tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouNow, which is linked below. If the link doesn't go through, it's literally younow.com backslash Peter Mon. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then we might go to a movie or watch some movies or TV shows. We got some TV shows and stuff to catch up on, so we'll see. But anyway, I was like, you need to just relax. You need to just be on vacation, take a day and a half off, and just enjoy yourself. Because in all honesty, like sometimes with like the uploading of the vlog and posting videos, I might not even finish. And yes, I do get started late a lot of days, but I may not even finish like where I close the computer until like 11:30 at night. In all honesty, like if I post the vlog, like that's when I finally finish it. And so I just need to just not tonight and take a night because. I'm starting to really like, I started this new channel and that like, like breathed, is that the word? It like put such a breath of fresh air into like me getting excited. And now I'm like, I'm so excited about posting these videos on all of my channels and I'm coming up with constant ideas and I'm like, oh my God, I have this to talk about that, to talk about all this kind of stuff, right? I have this I want to talk about. I mean, I had two videos today for my new reality TV channel that I was going to do. I was going to do, I was going to talk about, um, Love After Lockup, and I was going to talk about like all the new reality TV shows that are coming out and what they're about, like The Golden Bachelor, because all of them are starting, like a, many of them are starting like this week or the next. So I was just going to like let people know like the five or ten new shows I'm going to start watching, but I think I'll do that on Monday. I was like, I'm just going to not post today, not post tomorrow on that channel. I've got all these videos that I want to do. I get so excited about it, but then I'm getting like in all honesty, I'm getting between four and six hours of sleep and like I'm just the whole time that I'm up, I'm like doing stuff about videos and then like Alex and I might watch a show or two or the other night I went to the casino with Valerie and last night I went to the casino with Valerie and part of it was because I was like, I said to Alex, well I'll tell you how this happened in just a second, but he was like, I think you need to just get out of this house for a little bit. So I was like, I agree with you, which is interesting because what happened at the end. <clears throat> so anyway, so yeah, so for all those reasons, when this vlog is done today, and it's going to be a shorter vlog, it's not going to be like an hour long or 40, well, it's, I haven't had an hour long vlog in a while, it's not going to be 40 minutes, I don't, it's, it may not even be 30 minutes, it's going to be short. And when I'm done, I'm on vacation for a day and a half. <laughs> I do have a dental appointment very early on Monday morning, I think we have to be there at like 7.30 or 7.40 or leave here at 7.30 or 7.40, I don't remember, but anyway, I have to look that up. So, um, so yeah, so yesterday I filmed all this stuff and my plan was just to sit here and watch TV. Well, Valerie had told me that she was wanting to go to the casino again, like one more time before she left. And, um, and she's leaving like next weekend. I think like, I think like Friday or Saturday she's leaving. So it would have to be between like yesterday and next weekend. So yesterday morning it was so funny because she was joking with me the night before and she was like, do you want to go to the casino tomorrow night? I was like, no, girl. Like we did. She's like, but you want all that money so you've got money to spend if you want to go to the casino one last time. And it hadn't really settled in yet like that, that was my last time because I kind of figured she would probably call like on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday and be like, hey, do you want to go one last time? And that would be our last time, right? And I really didn't think that it would emotionally affect me the way that it did. And this is, and I just want to make this very clear because I know people are going to be like, the people that don't like me, like, oh, God, Peter is such a gambling addict. Like he's crying. I don't go to the casino that often to be a gambling addict. I mean, recently we have because I know she's moving and she knows that. So she's tried to get me out of this house as much as possible. But like, I don't sit here and like crave, like, oh my God, I gotta go to the casino. How am I gonna get there? If I did, I would have been taking Ubers left and right. I've never taken an Uber to the casino and I don't plan on it. Um, and so, 
she texted me yesterday morning and she's like, I'm not going to the casino tonight. And I said, okay, because I kind of, if we were going to go, I wanted to go tonight because Alex was gone, right? So, this is such a silly conversation. I feel so stupid. Like, I literally in the car was telling Alex about it and I just completely fucking lost it. I was just like, so, I think sometimes I'm so grateful that I'm still here. And I feel so bad about everything that happened, you know? And this is a lot of what I talk to my therapist about, but like, sometimes I'm kind of like, this is what you get, you know? Which my therapy says this is not like punishment, like you had a medical emergency, and I'm like, okay, but there's a part of me inside that still is like, okay, but this is, I don't know. So, you guys, like, I love my front porch. I love my house. I love spending time with Boo Radley, but in all honesty, there are entire weeks that unless I ask Alex to take me to the gas station or the store to get something or whatever, I don't leave this house for like five, six, seven days in a row. Like, it might be brunch to brunch on a Sunday. You know, Caroline couldn't come and get me for like three or four weeks because she was traveling and she had things to do and whatever. And there were like two weeks in a row where like I went to, and like Tani was out of time during some of that too. And so, um, I'm like, I love, I feel so blessed to have the neighbors I do and I love this front porch. I think the colder it starts to get, the more closed in my life starts to feel because I'm like, okay, I won't be out here all the time. I'll have to be inside. Um, I mean, not like I can't get like put on huge coats and stuff and. I kind of told myself I wasn't going to talk about this on camera, but forget it. I for screw it. I'm just, it's it's what's going on with me right now. So, um, you know, like everybody's like, just like Uber, go Uber and go to the mall, Uber and go to this. Uber. I don't want to sometimes. Like, I just don't want to. It's not the same thing for me as like going with a friend or being able to go from store to store to store to store, right? And I've chosen for right now to not drive because I think it's the right thing to do, right? But this is my life, and my life is very small, you know? And I, I have very few friends, and one of them is moving two hours away. You know, I was telling Valerie last night, I was like, I think sometimes people don't, like, like, they hear me talk about, like, Alex going out on a Saturday night with his girlfriends. Well, he's been home, like, other than, like, the work thing the other night, like, we sit down and we watch, like, three hours of TV shows. Or last weekend we watch, like, movies two nights in a row. I mean, it's like, we spend so much time together, you know. That sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm sure you feel this way if you're married. Like, I'm kind of happy when he goes sometimes because it's like I get the house to myself or whatever. Even though I'm here all by myself all day long, it's different. You know, I can just kind of, like, at night when I relax. And I, I don't have to feel like, okay, like, do you want to watch something? Or do you care if I just watch what I want to watch? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I think every couple that I know talks about, like, you know. If they have one TV, they have to fight over the TV of who wants to watch what they want. But I just watch stuff on my iPad, so. And, you know, we watch a lot of things together, but sometimes it's nice for him and for me. Like, when I go to my meeting nights with Tanya, it's nice for him to have the house to himself, you know? I'll be like, he said that to me. I was like, because he's like, I love to have the house to myself because I'm surrounded by people all the time, you know? And so he's like, when you go on Tuesday nights, I was like, what do you do? And he was like, well, I just, you know, like... To do all the spa stuff and take a long shower and play the blast the music in the bathroom bathroom because he loves bat blast the music and take super long showers and um, use up all the hot water and stuff like that. So he just gets totally relaxed on Tuesday nights. All ready for romanticals when I come home, you know. But um, so Valerie yesterday morning had texted me and she said I'm not going tonight and I said okay. I just didn't say anything right because I was like well maybe we'll go Saturday night. I had a feeling she, because I knew that her boyfriend was coming down this week to help her, um, like, get stuff ready. Because, like, she's taken so much stuff to, like, Goodwill and donated so much stuff and all this kind of stuff that I knew that she only has to, like, pack up the very rest of the stuff that she has. And so he was going to come down and help her. And so, um, and I, he was, like, going to drive, like, the U-Haul. And so she was going to go pick him up and bring him back. So I didn't know how that, I just knew that 
either last night or tonight was going to be the, probably the last night. I kind of in my mind thought maybe Tuesday or Wednesday she'd call me. But then when I found out that he was coming down for the whole week, I was like, no, that won't be the case. So she texted me last night. It was like literally when I was like, my vlog was almost done. And she said, I'm awake. And I was like, she's wanting to go to the casino. And I said, okay. And she said, um, do you want to go to the casino? And so I called her because we were texting. And I said, are you wanting to go tonight? And she said, yeah. And I said, you wouldn't want to, would you want to wait and go tomorrow? Because it was already late. It was like 9 o'clock or something like that. I think it was like 9.30. Maybe it was even later. I think it was like 10, it was like 10, 10, 20. It was 10, 20 because I can remember I said, because she said she would be here at 11.30. And so I said, would you want to go tomorrow night instead because it's so late? She goes, I can't go tomorrow night. She goes, I'm going to see my grandbaby. And she said, and then I'm going up, like, I'm going up north, two hours north. I think it's like almost three hours north. And she's like, and then I'm going to stay there over the weekend and then we're coming back on Monday. And then we're going to, like, be busy the whole week packing stuff. She doesn't typically go to the casino when her boyfriend is visiting anyway, which I totally understand, right? Um, and so she was like, I, this is literally the only night that I can go if you want to go. And I mean, I almost got tears in my eyes because I kind of wasn't prepared for it. And I said, so this will be like kind of like the last night that we go. And she was like, this will be the last night that we go. And I was like, okay. And she's like, but I want to get you out of the house. So she's like, let's go. And I said, she goes, even if we just go for an hour. And I said, okay. And so we went to the casino, stopped at the gas station, did all of our things. It was such a great time talking. I mean, we had just done it two nights before, right? We had such a good, was it two nights before or the night before? I think it was, it was two nights before. We had such a good time talking on the phone and stuff. And so I get there and just did all transparency. I was like, if this is my last time, I'm going out, right? Like, I had already, been, I came out the last time $2,600 ahead. So I took $1,100 in the casino. I was like, I don't know how much I'm going to spend, but I'm going to be a heavy better tonight. And I'm going to have fun, right? I know some of you out there are like, $1,100, well, it was their money anyway. So if I left there um, with, you know, uh, whatever, $1,600, $1,500, I was still $1,000 ahead than I was before, right? So I didn't bring that money with me. I just took that $1,100 in there. Okay, just to put this in perspective, so when I left last night, I left $1,400 ahead. So I'm like, I originally, I think, took out four or five, I think I took $500 out the first night that we went. I didn't take any money out last night. I think I took $500 out, and I am now at, well, I gave Alex $100 tonight, and I gave Valerie $100 for gas, and I think I'm at $4,400. So, I mean, like, this is, it's time to call it. Like, this never happens. So, I'm like, okay, this money is going to the bank. This is for safekeeping. This is savings. Like, this needs to go, right? Like, this is the end of the casino. But what was so weird was, like, you guys, I, I don't ever win at the casino like that. Like, if I take $300 or $500, like, when I go... I leave with zero in my pocket, period, in the story. Like, I never, I mean, it's very, very rare. It's probably not to you guys, because it's probably the only time I talk about the casino is when I win, right? But we go in there, and it's busy, because it's a Friday night. And so I sit down, and I'm sitting next to this woman that I had seen before, and she and her husband. Um, but she looks different. I haven't talked to her in, like, two, three years. But when I used to go up there way back in the day, you know, I've been going to the casino for, like, ten years, off and on. Um... When Alex and I were, like, really struggling, I would go up there two to three nights a week. And I played these machines I call the old lady machines because they were quarter. A, minimum, a maximum bet was 75 cents. You could play all night long and not spend any more than 60 to 80 hundred dollars. A hundred dollars being like the max. Like you could play all night long. And so I, I, my good friend Lori that had been in one of my vlogs in the past, she and I would sit next to each other and we met all these people. And this couple was one of them that we met. And we used to play, I mean, literally like two, three times a week. And it was so much fun. And it just was like, I mean, you would win 20, lose 20, win 20, lose 20, win six. I mean, it was just like we played it forever. Well, they got rid of those machines. Some of those people stopped coming. I literally, I'd seen this couple a couple times and I was like, is it them? Is it not them? Like the husband looks exactly the same, but she looks completely different. And so I sat down right next to her and I was like, because it was this machine that I wanted to play that Valerie had been playing on the time before. I was sitting on the one next to it. And so I looked at her and I said, um, can I ask you a question? She's like, yeah. And I said, is your name? And, and I said her name and she goes, yeah. She goes, um, and she said my name. I go, I cannot believe that you remember me. Because, I mean, this is years ago, right, at this point. 
But I think like at that point was when I was like talking to people, like all the people that worked in the casino. I became very friendly with the people that worked in the casino, like the housekeepers and the the security. I mean, everybody like I'd just be like they'd be like, Hey Peter, I'd be like, Hey, how are you? And they would come and talk to me. I mean, I became good friends with some of these people and it was just like you know, I don't drink, I don't go out to bars regularly or whatever, and so to go up there for like two, three hours and just sit there and spend, you know, 60 bucks was kind of like my outlet of drinking fountain pops and just kind of getting it out of my mind, especially when, you know, Alex would go to bed and things weren't great between us anyway, and that's kind of like where a lot of it started. And so I saw them, that was weird. Then one of the housekeepers that I still see when I go up there now that I've known forever, he... I became really good friends with one of the other housekeepers that works there. She now works in behind in the cage, but behind the cage. I also know her mom too, because her mom works at like a local business in Anderson, like when you drive in. So I see her mom. So I know her mom too. They're very sweet and they watch my videos and stuff like that. Like she'll go and get like a Starbucks drink that I recommended on whatever, you know, and she'll tell me all about it. And she and I have just been like really, really friendly for like years on end. Um, like, you know, talk to each other outside the casino and things like that. So, her boyfriend used to work there and he doesn't work there anymore. And so, I know her boyfriend because he used to work there in housekeeping as well. And so, um, this other housekeeper was like, oh, so-and-so's here, her boyfriend. Like, he wants to say hi to you. He's sad that he missed you the other night. So he went and found him and he came over and we talked for like a long time and I said this is my last time coming to the casino and he was like, I'm so sad for you, like I'm sad, you know, sorry that you can't come anymore and and he was like, um, you know, whatever and and he was like, but please make sure that you go say goodbye to her before you leave because she was really upset She because I tried to see her the other, the other night that I'd been there, I couldn't see her because she works behind the cage, like in the, like behind, behind, like you She's not behind the cage. Like, you have to open a door, you know. And so they have to ask for her to come out. And so, and he was, like, telling me who to ask for her to come out and all this kind of stuff. So I said, okay, I'll do that before I leave. I mean, I just kept on running into all these people that, like, literally, like, through the years, like, were people that I had played next to and just kind of, like, knew randomly. It just was so stupid. Like, this is so stupid that I'm upset about this fucking casino. Like, it's so stupid, right? And I said this to Valerie last night when we were walking out. And I said it to Alex last night, but it's not really about the casino, you know? So at that point, I'm not like even emotional about it. Like I don't even, I'm just kind of like, oh, this is the last night, I'm winning a lot. Like I was winning, like, I mean, I got up way more than what I took out. And I left like, I think like $1,400 ahead or something like that last night. And so, I just was winning the whole night, too. So I was always up. So I was being able to, like, make large bets. I was having so much fun. I met these two women from Guatemala. I was telling them that my husband's from Venezuela. And they were really sweet. And it just was such a good night. Valerie was doing well. I was doing well. We just had a good night. And um, it didn't, like, really hit me that this was, like, the last time. I don't know why. Like, I know if there are some of you out there that are probably like, why is this such a big deal to Peter? It's kind of like, it's not even really about the fact that it's a casino. It's like where I would go. It's kind of like going to the Moose Lodge, you know? It's like going there and being like, hey, how are you doing? And hey, it's good to see you. And getting a fountain pop and sitting down and being able to just like zone out for a couple hours and not pick up my phone and, you know, not be thinking about this, that, and the other and life's problems and whatever, you know? And like Tanya, like, she doesn't love the casino, but the couple times we've went, she's like, I totally understand why you like it. She's like, you just get your free fountain cop. Oh, Lord, free fountain pop or, you know, your coffee and you just sit here and you just zone out. It's like, you don't have to think about anything. It's like real relaxing, right? And it is. And so it's, you know, excitement factor, but meeting the people there has been so nice to me. That was a point when I was rather lonely in my life, you know, like Alex and I weren't getting along and other than Tanya, I didn't have tons of people in my life and I just felt real lonely, you know? And so that's when I started meeting those people. I've known them for six eight, ten years now, you know? So I go to say, I, I went to go cash out my ticket before I was leaving, and so when I was there, the guy that cashed out my ticket was who her boyfriend had told me to ask, and so I asked him, I said, can you go tell her that Peter's here, and I'd like to say hi to her, you know, or whatever, and so I, like, I think I said goodbye or something, and I could feel it, like, in my eyes, like, well up, and he goes, okay, hold on a second, and he went in the back room, he opened the, or the other woman goes, oh, I'll go ask for him. And so she went in there and she like opened the door and she said, can so-and-so come out of here? So she came out, she's like behind the cage, like the plexiglass. And she was like, hey, it's so good to see you. And I was like, I think it's good to see you too. And I was like, do you have to stay behind there or can you come out? She's like, no, I can come out for a hug really quick. And so 
So she had to come out through this like side door and I was like looking at the door and I was like, I'm literally gonna lose my, my shit as soon as she comes out here. So she came out. She gave me like this huge hug. Then she just like looked at me and she put her hands like this and I said, this is my last time ever coming here. Unless I just randomly come with somebody that wants to come, you know. But I don't know anybody that ever wants to come to the casino. And she's like, what do you mean? And, and she knows I don't drive and stuff, you know. And I was like, well, you know Valerie because they all know Valerie too. And I said, she's moving to her boyfriend's house. And she's like, yeah, I knew that. And I said, so we were trying to figure out like when was the last time to come. And, and she looked at me and she goes, Peter, is this really about the casino? And I go, no. I said, my life is just like so small. I said, I have a very blessed life. I said, I have amazing people in my life, but I don't have a lot of people in my life. And I said, I love my house, and I love my front porch, and I love my bedroom and everything, but I'm stuck there all the time, you know? I said, I have to ask somebody, unless I take an Uber to like take me places, I start feeling like a burden and a nuisance to everybody in my life. I said, it's hard, you know? And she goes, I know it's hard. She like started crying. And I just said, I'm gonna miss seeing you because it's been like so nice to just like, I don't know, it's so stupid. Like I said to Valerie when I was walking out, like as soon as we walked out, I just like, I lost it. She's like, what is going on? And she looked at me like I was crazy. I go, Valerie, this is not about, this is so, like I go, this is so fucked up that I'm crying about because going to the casino for the last time. She goes, this is not about you going to the casino for the last time. She's like, this is about the fact that you need to get out of your house more. And I was like, I know I do. But it doesn't feel like I'm getting out of the house to take an Uber to go eat brunch somewhere by myself. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, you know? And the reality is that, because I know I'm going to get a thousand comments about what you should do, what you should do, what you should do. And I'm asking you right now, literally I'm asking you at 24 minutes or whatever it is. I cannot handle it tonight, okay? I don't need those comments. You are not helping me with the 10,000 comments of well, what you need to do, what you should do, blah, blah, blah. I can't handle it, okay? I'm just being completely authentic with how I'm feeling right now. And you know what? Two days from now, I'll feel much better. Because when Valerie's gone for six weeks up north, I never think about going to the casino. Like, I really don't. So it's not about the casino. It's about, I feel like my life is just getting like this. With not be, having that outlet, you know. Tani being so busy. There's like so many personal things going on in Tanya's life other than her business. And so like she just can't go to meetings as much as we used to or... She'll, like, catch, like, if, if it's convenient for her to, like, run to a noon meeting, she'll just do it. But, like, I, she'll just think about it at the last minute and go or whatever, you know? And I could take Ubers to, like, meetings or, you know, ask people for rides and stuff like that. And I don't know. I just feel like my life is small. And I'm not asking for sympathy and I'm not asking for pity. I don't want it, right? Like, I, I want you guys to know this. I have an amazingly blessed life, okay? I have, like, no worries in my life right now. I feel so blessed. I have an amazing husband, amazing dog, amazing best friend. I mean, Valerie's an amazing friend. We talked about how this is just going to change the condition of our friendship, but it's not going to change our friendship, you know? I have an amazing family. I love you guys and you watch my videos. I love what I get to do every single day by filming videos and stuff like that, right? I'm just kind of sad today. But I think sometimes like I push that down. I'm gonna talk to my therapist about it, but often like I think I just push it down. Because it's like if you if you feel sorry for yourself for and, like, if I was telling myself this, I would say, you have every right to feel the way that you want to feel. You have every right to feel your emotions, okay? Don't live in them, don't stay stuck in them, but you have every right to feel your emotions. But I think sometimes when I start getting sad, or I feel like the walls are closing in, or I feel like my life is very small, you know, it's like... Like, I think for a while, like... Myself and other people kind of like, we all kind of acted like there's going to be a day when we're going to go back and everything's just how it was before. And that's not the case. Like, this is my life going forward, you know? And like I said, I have an amazing life. 
And I think if I, I feel like if I come out and I say, or even to myself, like, I'm sad, I feel like my life is small, I feel like my life is closing in on me, it's, you know, I think if I feel like that or I say that, I feel guilty, like, you, you it stopped. Um, I feel like I am like, okay, but you are so grateful for still being here and having the life that you do. So to say that implies that you're not grateful and um, implies that you take for granted what you have and what you've been given. And so I think I push it down, right? Because I'm like, but... So I think sometimes I push my feelings down of, I don't know that I would necessarily say that I feel lonely. Like, I don't feel lonely. I don't feel bad. I just feel like, I just feel like my life is small. I don't really know how to explain it more than that, you know? But like, we travel, go out to dinner, get dinner in, watch movies. I see Tanya once in a while, but you know, it's like, I feel like, especially in the last six months, it's like little by little, one thing is taken away from me. Like, it's like, you know, Tanya's schedule getting crazy and we can't go to meetings like regularly as much as we used to. That's like one thing. It's not her fault, you know, it's just the conditions of life. It's just how life is happening for her right now. That might change. But then it's like Valerie moving and I'm like so happy that Valerie's moving and that she's got this relationship, you know? Um, this candle is like, well, I'm just gonna leave it on because I'm gonna get off here in a second, but I'm like so incredibly happy for Valerie. I can't stand when people like can't be friends or be happy for their friend's happiness, like even it affects their life. Like, okay, so I'm not gonna be friend from, uh, happy for my friend Valerie because the greatest thing ever is happening in her life and she's moving in with her boyfriend and he's like great for her and treats her like she deserves to be treated. Why would I not, because I can't go to the casino or go out to dinner or drive around with, you know, because she'll come and pick me up and drive around and whatever, like, like, those are things that are not as important as Valerie's happiness. And I cannot stand when people cannot be fr happy for their friends. Like, it's really literally one of my biggest pet peeves when people are like, yeah, I don't know. I just can't say when people aren't happy for their friends' successes or they're jealous of their friends' successes or they I don't know. It just or they're I don't know. It's just like be be happy for your friends. You want they, you wouldn't want them to be happy for you, you know? So it's not even about that. I just feel like like I'm happy for her. Like I'm excited for her. Like we'll still see each other like when she comes down to see her grandkids and stuff like that, right? I feel like it's like each thing, my life just gets a little bit little bit smaller. And I said to Alex in the car today, I said, and honestly, because Alex would be like, well, you just need to like get out and meet some new people and stuff like that. And and he's like, you know, and whatever. And, and I'm like, in all honesty, Alex, like, I'm 51 years old. And I know this is going to sound kind of shitty, but like, I'm not really in a position where I want to start a bunch of new friendships at 51 years old. I'm just not, and I know that that sounds horrible. You know, maybe one or two here that I meet in a meeting or in recovery or something like that, but, like, these friendships that I have now are, like, 5, 10, 20 years friendships. Those are friendships that take a long time to build and cultivate. I'm not saying that I'm never going to have another new friend. I'm sure I will, you know, but I'm not going to seek it out, like, I just don't feel like I have it in me at this moment. That might change in a month from now. In a month from now, I might, you know, go join a book club or a volleyball team or a bowling league or, you know, <laughs> or meet somebody at a meeting and we become, like, you know, best friends and we start going to meetings like crazy. I mean, who knows? I don't know. I'm open to all of that, right? But today and last night, more last night, today I feel a little bit better about it. Like, I knew when I woke up today and everything like that, like, I'd be like, it's, so what, that you can't go to the casino? And it's, like, totally not even about the casino. It's just, like, I feel like my life is just getting smaller, you know? And so, I'm going to have to figure out how to open up my life more. Um, but I don't, I don't know what that means for me today. But at the same time, and like, there's gonna be some of you out there that nod and are like, oh, I so relate to that. And there are gonna be other people out there like, I don't understand a thing you're talking about. 
But like, if you told me that I was gonna live to be like 70 or 80, let's hope, right? <clears throat> God, that's crazy to think. Like, if I live to be 70, I've got 19 years left of my life. Like, that's surreal to me. I hope I live longer than that. Um, but, like, if you said to me, like, I was going to live to be 70, right? If my life looked exactly like it did today, even if you took out the trips, like, if every single day I got up, filmed videos, talked on the phone to friends, went to a meeting here and there, talked to my sponsor, went to the pool in the summer, counted down into the summer you know, got pizza, ordered food or whatever, like in all actuality, the majority of the time, I would be completely in bliss and be completely accepting and happy with that life. Like, I feel like that is a blessed life. I live a blessed life. It doesn't mean from time to time that I don't have feelings about things, you know? I think the sounds so beautiful tonight. Well, thank you for listening to me tonight. And, um, and you know, tomorrow I might get up here and be laughing. And well, not tomorrow, but the next day I'm taking tomorrow off, just so you know. Um, Monday I might be on here and I might be laughing and joking and be like, God, I completely don't even feel like that anymore at all. Sometimes I feel things so intensely, and then two days later I'm like, Yeah, I don't feel like that at all anymore, you know? So anyway, um, but thank you for listening to me. It's getting kind of dark out here, isn't it? So I got to figure out what I'm going to do for food. I'm going to get pizza or what I'm going to do. But thanks for listening to me. Just talking about it kind of made me feel better. Like, that's why this vlog is so cathartic for me. Like, even just talking about it. Like, I talked about it with Valerie. I talked about it with Alex today. And now I'm talking about it with you guys. Like, I feel like I've talked it out enough that, like, I, I feel better. I don't need to talk about it anymore, you know? I worked it through. And it's also, like, talking tonight has made me realize that I did talk about it and I addressed it and how I felt and now I can go back to that place of being extremely grateful like that last part that I said about I could sit on this front porch for the rest of my life and be totally fine and happy it's so true and I just think even having a front porch to sit on no matter how small it is or whatever is like it's something that I didn't know that I needed or that I wanted so much. So, I don't know. I, I feel very grateful and very appreciative tonight after having talked about all of that kind of stuff. I have to kind of, like, work through stuff. You know, this is why I'm a talker. This is why I'm a venture. You know, I have to, like, talk through things and work through things. But I'm starting to feel better. So, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. And I'm just going to get off here real quick tonight because it's already getting so dark. And the shadows are casting from the candle. So... Um, I hope you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday and um, a fantastic and wonderful weekend. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I will see you guys on Monday, taking tomorrow off. Hope you have a great rest of the, rest, hope you have a great rest of the weekend, an amazing Sunday, and that you get relaxed, rejuvenated, renewed, and refreshed for the week ahead. I love you guys, and I will see you on Monday. Bye. Love ya.